Hi chemists. In our last video, we focused on how to go from the name to the formula. Now we're going to focus on how to go from the formula to the name. The objectives are very similar in that you will be able to identify polyatomic and monatomic ions, write chemical formulas for names for ionic compounds. Here are some examples. Now, it's important to note that you always have to write the name of the cation first and the name of the anion second. Remember, it's always metal first, non-metal second. So if you look at something like KBr, you're going to look at it just as it is and name it exactly how you see it. For example, you would call this potassium bromide. You do need to change the ending of the nonmetal to IDE. In the next example, you have calcium iodide. You need to try to do your best with naming and formulating and spelling things correctly, but as you get more used to the language of chemistry, it'll become easier to spell things and say things appropriately. So just do the best you can. Finally, you've got sodium, and then if you re recognize it, this is SO4, which is on your polyatomic ion sheet called sulfate. So this would be called sodium sulfate. For elements with more than one possible charge, or the transition metals, you have to use the charge on the anion to determine the charge on the cation. So for example, we know that iron has two possibilities. It could be iron with a plus two charge or iron with a plus three charge. We need to figure out what it is. And so the way that we do that is we use the anion, or the CrO4 in this case, to help us do that. So notice that the charge on the chromate is minus two. There are three of them, and therefore on this side of the chemical formula, there is a minus six charge. What that means on the left-hand side of the formula, if this is minus six, this side, because we know all compounds are considered neutral, has to be positive six. The only thing is you have to distribute the positive six among the fact that there are two irons. And so, because of that, positive 6 divided by 2 will give you positive 3. The positive 3 indicates that the charge on the iron is going to be plus 3, and therefore it is going to be iron 3 chromate. So this positive 3 is reflected in the Roman numeral. Here's another example. Again, if you notice where a tin is um, on your periodic table, you'll see that it has more than one possible charge. Because it has more than one possible charge, it means that it needs a Roman numeral. So in order to figure out what the Roman numeral is, we will use the charge on the carbonate. Carbonate is minus two. And notice there are two of them. So what that means is on the right-hand side, it is going to be equal to minus four. If this side of the compound is minus four, that means that this side of the compound has to be positive four. I don't have to do any division here because notice there's only one tin. So that positive 4 tells us that that is the charge on the tin, and therefore it will be tin 4 carbonate. In this example, again, noticing where copper is, you could see copper could be 1 plus or 2 plus, and so therefore he also needs a Roman numeral. We will determine the charge on the copper by looking at the phosphide ion. So this is from the periodic table, and phosphide is going to be minus 3. If this side is minus 3, that means that the metal has to be positive 3. However, notice there are three coppers, so we need to distribute that positive 3 charge among three coppers, and so you'll do positive 3 divided by 3 gives you positive 1. The positive 1 tells us that the copper we are talking about is copper 1 phosphide. Again, we have the chromate ion. We're going to use that to determine the charge on the cobalt. It's minus two times three, which gives you negative six. If this side is negative six, that means this side has to be positive six, but again, we have to distribute the six among the two cobalts. So therefore, you will do positive six divided by two. will tell you that the charge on each cobalt is going to be positive three, and that will be the Roman numeral for cobalt, cobalt 3 chromate. Hopefully that helps you to understand how to go from the formula to the name and name to the formula at this point. 
as usual, just keep practicing and you'll get better at it. Thank you so much for watching.